Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So guys, we got some interesting things to cover today. Uh, right now, I want to talk about the crypto market because Bitcoin has seen a bit of a decline and, uh, you know, it seems significant considering all the momentum upward we've seen over the last little while. If I put Bitcoin here on the hourly, you guys can see it has uh, come down significantly over the last several hours. Right now, trading at about 13400 per BTC. Now, Again, in the grand scheme of things, uh, the, the chart, you know, the closer you move in on this trend, the scarier it tends to look. Okay, like, you know, oh, are we seeing red? Are we seeing a big correction? Ultimately, no. Bitcoin is a volatile asset. Uh, it is it is likely we could even see Bitcoin go back down and retrace into this level of support. Okay, so old resistance will become new support. Uh, anywhere between that $11,450 mark approximately to $12,342. This is a range, guys. Okay, so we could see Bitcoin retrace anywhere between uh, these prices and uh, that would be justified because old resistance becomes new support and vice versa old support becomes new resistance That is uh, just one rule with technical analysis So it retraced back here as I had mentioned in yesterday's video uh, And we are seeing it now come down of course why well because this level that we hit up here this level up here the $13,900 level is a pretty fresh level. We haven't seen it since uh, last summer. So June 2019 uh, so fresh level of support, of course, we are going to see sellers take some profits off the table. That's not to say that Bitcoin isn't going to keep rallying upward, guys. Uh, but this is a good opportunity for those interested in maybe getting some Bitcoin uh, to have a purchase order ready if it does come down within this level here, okay? The crypto market... Uh, as a whole, yesterday we were seeing Bitcoin, you know, it's seven day rally. Uh, we were seeing upwards of, what was it, 7% over the seven days. Well, now take a look at it over the 24 hour period, uh, down 2.35%. Ethereum only down 0.78. XRP only down 1.37. Bitcoin Cash only down 0.36. And Chainlink down here only down 0.32. So you guys can see the altcoins aren't actually uh, correcting as much as Bitcoin is correcting. The reason being Bitcoin uh, has had some time to rally. Now sellers are taking profits and it's being reflected in the Bitcoin dominance as well, down a little bit, 63.2%. And the crypto market cap as a whole, 393.6 billion for the entire crypto market. We were, we were close to 400 billion, I believe, over the weekend, uh, if my memory serves me correctly. So that's the story for Bitcoin. Some people wondering about this, some people uh, here on Twitter like BTC underscore Jack Sparrow wondering about fourth minor capitulation. So here's what he's noticed. Looks like we are getting the fourth minor capitulation larger than 15% in Bitcoin's history. It's oddly large. It does freak me out a bit. And so what he's talking about is this, okay? And he's demarcated these uh, levels here on a chart himself. Uh, over here between minus 15.2378 and minus 15.1790, next difficulty challenge. Here's some statistics, not going to read them all over because uh, you guys can see here on this screen grab what I'm talking about. And of course, I will link this in the description of the video if you want to look at it later. Steve down here wondering about this. Uh, looks like there was a large spike recently in first spend, followed by a drop off in mined coins. Someone going out of business. Uh, referring to this, minor spend has been extreme lately. The optimistic take is that with inventory rapidly diminishing, price inevitably must go up and in a big way. Best spin, heavy minor reorganization at the moment with survivors getting a larger share of the pie and price skyrocketing. That coming from David. Uh, and Bitcoin Broski here mentions this, the hash rate decrease is due to seasonal migration from within China, although 100% of the machines won't come back online, old generations lost during transit, etc., over 80% will return in the next couple of weeks. So uh, that with regards to uh, the rainy season ending in China. And so Bitcoin miners are actually moving their gear, physically moving their gear in China to alternate locations. Trading against Dan LOL says down here, lots of new S17s were switched on in September by one of the big pools and difficulty shot up. Could be some of the pools with older miners having uh, to capitulate and the difficulty increasing. So some interesting things to note there, guys, with Bitcoin. We do have to pay attention to Bitcoin because it is the pulse of the market. So understanding what's going on with Bitcoin, understanding, you know, miners in China, the rainy season, reorganizing their mining rigs, you know, despite whether we are uh, fans of Bitcoin or not, I personally hold some Bitcoin. You might hate Bitcoin. It kind of doesn't really matter because what is happening is going to affect the entire market. So it is good to keep an eye on that. Wanted to bring this up uh, with regards to what's going on in the 
Facebook world and censoring, uh, yeah, censoring and banning the Bitcoin hashtag. This coming from XRP Crypto Wolf on uh, Twitter. So he posted this article and what appears to be a renewed effort to clamp down on the cryptocurrency industry, social media, Goliath, Facebook has started banning the Bitcoin hashtag. Considering that the hashtag for Facebook's uh, backed a Libra stablecoin still works fine, the Bitcoin community was naturally left indignant by this glaring act of censorship. So again, uh, this with regards to the entire world uh, and Bitcoin and cryptocurrency kind of uh, as a whole. Bitcoin obviously being the ambassador for the entire cryptocurrency industry. Uh, I think it's safe to say that it is. Uh, Facebook and Twitter were both front and center during last week's Senate hearing with Republicans grilling its executives, Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey, for allegedly silencing conservative voices. When it comes to crypto, the two chief executives went in complete opposite directions, though. The Bitcoin hashtag is the only thing in Dorsey's Twitter profile. Zuckerberg, instead of embracing the decentralized digital money, drew the ire of regulators and politicians with its highly controversial Libra project that could become a dominant international currency. Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter and Square, dismissed the idea of joining the crumbling Libra Association last year. He said, hell no, nothing within Libra had to be a cryptocurrency to do what they wanted to do. Facebook started banning cryptocurrency advertisements on its platform back in January 2018. Don't know if you guys remember that uh, at the height of the bull run. Twitter also moved to prohibit crypto ads in March 2018 in spite of Dorsey's pro-crypto stance. Uh, so some interesting things happening here on two of the most uh, popular social media platforms in the world. And this is going to mean something. The fact that Mark Zuckerberg is deciding that Bitcoin cannot have a hashtag. The fact that, pe you know, the fact that Facebook is flagging this as uh, potentially harmful to people speaks uh, volumes to me, speaks volumes to maybe uh, the kind of sociopolitical climate that we are entering within the next couple of months. Let's not forget, Davos is happening in January. The presidential election is happening tomorrow. Lots going on, guys. Uh, so I thought I'd bring this to your attention. Thanks so much to XRP Crypto Wolf for bringing that up. And there was also this story, guys, from the Daily Hodel. Uh, so this is uh, Matt Hoogan. He is the CIO of Bitwise. Massive maturation of crypto market is underway. This is what he says. The chief investment officer of one of the largest crypto asset managers in the world. Yeah, you heard that right. In the world. The largest crypto asset managers in the world says the bigwigs have officially accepted cryptocurrency as a valid asset to allocate and it's just about to snowball. In an interview with Laura Shin on the Unconfirmed podcast, Matt Hoogan of Bitwise Asset Management points out that a massive maturation is occurring as hedge funds and financial advisors take a serious interest in the crypto markets. You're just seeing a massive maturation of the crypto market. It's now acceptable for institutional and professional investors to allocate, and that's being driven by improvements in custody, improvements in trading, big improvements in regulation, and then some proof of concept developments like uh, what we saw with the DeFi uh, situation, okay, decentralized finance market. So it's just the perfect market for people to allocate, he says. And the quote goes on, you have these couple of big catalysts, and I think we're in the early innings of this happening. I think it's going to snowball from here. Hugan also noted that uh, the Bitwise customer base has gone through a significant transformation in the span of three years. It's been huge, he says. The customer base, when we launched in 2017, guys, which wasn't that long ago, was primarily high net worth and ultra high net worth individuals who were looking for an easy way to get exposure to all or at least the majority of the crypto asset market cap. Uh, that's really shifted. He goes on to say those people are still allocating in Bitwise, but the driver of the inflows that led to the $100 million mark is hedge funds and financial advisors, and particularly financial advisors couldn't have really allocated two years ago. Two years ago, there were really no regulated and insured custodians in the market. Two years ago, guys, I know I was in the crypto market two years ago, and I know a lot of you guys were too. What does this tell you? We were super early back then, and now smart money is pouring in. And the best part is the masses still are just getting a taste of this with, uh, for example, PayPal. So this is really going to move, in my opinion. And uh, the CIO of Bitwise, Matt Hoogan, 
uh, tends to agree. The CIO highlights the fact that mainstream analysts are now openly touting hugely bullish forecasts for Bitcoin. Just a few months ago, Bloomberg senior commodity strategist came out and said that Bitcoin could trade to $100,000. And now you have JP Morgan saying it could easily 2x or 3x if millennials crowd out gold and it could 10x if it replaced and mixed it. These were price targets that people were expounding on crypto maybe in 2017 and were getting laughed out of the room by traditional Wall Street. So boy, have the tables turned. Now it's traditional Wall Street that is recognizing the potential size of this market. So in two years, Wall Street went from laughing at these ginormous Bitcoin predictions to, you know, suggesting, uh, yeah, this is where Bitcoin is going. I told you so, I told you so, everybody I was speaking to back in 2017 and 2018 who didn't believe me about cryptocurrencies. Fine. Uh, so, as for the recent news that PayPal has allowed its users to buy and sell cryptocurrencies, Hugen believes that massive retail adoption won't happen overnight, of course. However, PayPal's giant leap into crypto has cleared the way for big financial institutions to hop on the bandwagon. You're going to see every other major institution follow suit, and that is huge. Because, uh, when one institution does it, uh, you know, their friends on Wall Street, they can't let their competitors get that, uh, upper hand. So now they have to as well. It's sort of table sticks, he says. Interesting to say the least. Uh, and this uh, Daily Hodel article actually has this uh, interview here with Laura Shin in the uh, article, embedded in the article. So guys, I'll leave that there for you. Adoption, adoption, adoption. That's the name of the game. This is from XRP Crypto Wolf. European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde announced an ECB survey on the issuance of the digital euro, implying that they're considering a retail CBDC. So this is an update because a retail CBDC is very, very different than a CBDC that is going to be used internally uh, within the government or high-ranking banking institutions, for example. So as Europeans are increasingly turning to digital, in the ways uh, they spend, save, and invest. We should be preparing to issue a digital euro if needed. I'm also keen to hear your views on it. This coming from Christine Lagarde in a tweet uh, when she was announcing a survey. While saying the ECB is still reviewing the possibility of issuing a digital euro, the central bank president said in the video embedded in her tweet, we've just launched a public consultation so that consumers and Europeans can actually express their preferences and tell us whether they would be happy to use the digital euro just in the way they use a euro coin or a euro banknote knowing that it is a central bank money that is available and that they can rely upon. So these announcements are coming uh, after Benoit Curé, head of the innovation hub at the Bank for International Settlements and a member of the bank's executive committee, had the same kind of sentiment in an opinion piece uh, that Coindesk reported on. Such a confluence of opinions underlines these conversations about the likelihood of a retail CBDC are happening at the highest level. So more news here with regards to the ECB, a digital euro, uh, going to be used for retail payments. At least they are uh, getting people's opinions about this. This is all very interesting, guys. There's going to be a new financial system and uh, now it's not hidden. You know, back in 2018, when people were laughing at these Bitcoin projections, we were invested in XRP. We understood that a new financial system is coming and that XRP was going to be the backbone of this. And everybody else was just kind of poo-pooing Bitcoin. Everybody was focused focused on Bitcoin and Bitcoin made new all-time highs and how could Bitcoin be worth 20,000 per coin? Well now look, fast forward two years and look at where we've come. Of course people could blame it on a pandemic, but realistically, had uh, the innovations not been being made in the background, even if we did have a pandemic today, we wouldn't be ready to roll out. Ripple's been doing what they've been doing over the last several years to roll out their plan. We've got the infrastructure, we've got important bodies around the world talking about things like CBDCs. So a lot of us are invested in XRP, raring to go, really, really excited. Until we see this, this from XRP Euphoria underscore on Twitter. And uh, I want to start by saying that some people are considering this FUD. Other people are uh, looking and reading through this and trying to understand it. Guys on this channel, uh, I don't spread FUD, but when I do talk about something like this, it's to get a conversation going. It's to, you know, hear opposing points of view. This is what uh, discourse should be. So let's read this. Let's talk about this because I know it's got uh, a few people in the space uh, a little concerned. These are levels of FUD that I'm unable to unravel with my limited intellect. Perhaps Galgatron or Joel Katz could address this claim. I'm not saying I believe it. In truth, I don't even fully understand it. So is XRP the vehicle to the future or just the gas? Uh, and this posted by Dave. So this was retweeted out by uh, XRP Euphoria and posted originally by Dave of the day. So here's how it goes. After pondering this story, I can no longer risk holding XRP. 
As of tonight, I've sold all my XRP. This theory makes too much sense, and I can't ignore the fact that everything Ripple is doing looks to be leading up to this outcome. And then he says, I'll buy Ripple's IPO instead, which of course, you know, as a company, Ripple, uh, obviously a very, very successful company. What they're doing in the space is very, very forward thinking. But we're all assuming that XRP is going to be part of this financial system. Well, guys, I'm going to read you this and it is quite lengthy, but uh, I have a feeling that you guys will probably want to hear the whole thing because I've got some opinions about this as well. XRP is the one it starts off. How many times have you heard this from insiders, popular Twitter riddlers, YouTube personalities, and just about everyone who is invested in XRP. You have been deceived to an extent. It goes on to say XRP is the one, the one gas token underlined to rule them all. Let me explain. Ripple has always separated themselves from XRP by taking on more of a custody and development role in the XRP tokens ecosystem. They have been avoiding letting you in on what XRP's true purpose is, to be the gas token for the new digital gold standard. We, the general and crypto population, have been hearing about the Great Reset from the IMF and the WEF recently. Judy Shelton has been a proponent of a gold-backed dollar in a cryptocurrency kind of way. Uh, governments around the world have been repatriating their gold reserves and buying up all the gold that they can from the open market. Something is happening behind the scenes and digital gold is lurking in the shadows on the cusp of its release. The XRP community, whether they choose to believe it or not, for the most part, know about this potential digital gold plan as it runs rampant in the community. Well, the truth is that the plan is correct. There will be a digital gold and it has everything to do with XRP, uh, just not in the way you might expect. XRP will not represent the value of gold. It will not be tied to or pegged to the value of gold. It will not be a gold certificate or a gold bond or anything to do with an equal or equivalent representation or rights to gold ownership in any way. XRP will, however, in a broad sense, be the gas token used to run the digital gold certificate that will be a direct one-to-one -one exchangeable digital asset with gold bullion. So you will ask yourselves, how can this be? Ripple says that XRP is meant for international remittances, MoneyGram, and for banks to have fast, cheap, and reliable money transfers. Well, if Ripple were to announce its true plans for XRP, the ecosystem would collapse before the plan could be implemented. So what he's suggesting is that Ripple's plans thus far have been a facade. <laughs> okay, uh, partnering with all these banks, uh, you know, setting up these rails, basically the money transfer, the cross-border transfer industry uh, that Ripple has been setting up for all these years, the 300 plus, 350 plus banking relationships that they have, all of facade apparently, goes on to say, see, Ripple needs an excuse to install its partnership cloud services in every central bank uh, and central banks across the world. After all, XRP is integral to the success of the looming digital gold certificate, which will run the economy after the reset has taken place. So how does the digital gold certificate token name the XAU work? And how does it relate to XRP? Well, it is quite simple. The hidden ledger theory that we've talked about in previous videos, or the theory that XRP is just a test network for the real future, real deal ledger is correct in a sense, except rather than the existing XRP ecosystem being pushed off to the side to die, it will be used for all intents and purposes as a gas token to run the second ledger. Now, you may say to yourself, Ripple and its prominent faces have already debunked the hidden second ledger theory. Are they lying? No, they are not lying. They are just not voluntarily expanding on the idea of this topic. There is no second XRP ledger. There are secondary assets that run on the existing XRP ledger, specifically XAU, uh, XAG, XPT, and XPD, much like the Ethereum uh, ETH network, the secondary ERC tokens that run parallel to ETH have no direct correlated or intermingled value tied to them, uh, to each other, other than open market psychology effects. Just because ETH goes up 10% in value does not mean that ERC tokens must go up 10% in value. So he's trying to give an example here. However, the native token of the Ethereum network ETH is used to pay for transaction fees or gas. Get it now. Nope, I must be lying to you, he goes on to say. You need proof. You have spent too much time and effort investing into the greatest cryptocurrency that has ever existed. It can't be possible. You could not have been fooled into funding Ripple, the highest valued private company on the planet, and their future gold certificate network to not even get a good return on your investment for all that work. Impossible. So that was page one of four, guys. Uh, the next ones are shorter. 
Well, as a former XRP investor, I was just as confused and angry as you are right now. So here is the proof for you. So here's the proof, apparently. Ripple has formed a partnership with a company called BPG Covine based in Slovenia. BPG Covine is a specialist in the areas of precious metals, mining, recycling, refining, and most importantly, vaulting with Malka Amit in London, Zurich, Hong Kong, Singapore, New York, Shanghai, Toronto, and Bangkok. Uh, BPG has created hundreds of billions in digital metals or e-metal certificate trust lines that are currently running parallel to XRP using the XRP Ledger network. These tokens are uh, XAU Gold, XAG Silver, XPT Platinum, and XPD Palladium. Currently, hundreds of billions of these certificate trust lines have been entered, registered, and verified on the XRP ledger and are live and ready to receive deposits. So these certificates are a one-to-one -one IOU representative of one gram of their respective metals. Uh, goes on to say these certificates are 100% one-to-one backed with an equal amount of physical bullion that will be stored within vaults around the world and will be able to be redeemed globally as an international recognized IOU for precious metal ownership. So just giving an example of that, currently there are over 440 billion, yes, billion uh, XAU gold IOU trust line certificates that have been created and are ready to get backed with vaulted assets. That is 440 plus billion grams of gold that are ready to go live right alongside XRP at this very moment in time. So how much gold is that at the time of writing? And then it gives a number. One gram of gold is worth about $60.41. Want a real number? Right now, today, there is about 26.5 trillion US dollars worth of gold line trusts running parallel to XRP ready to be filled with the flick of a switch. Now, I don't know where he's getting this information from. Uh, down here, he mentions uh, these websites. And when you go to these websites, you do actually see that there are Ripple partnerships. I also found, uh, so by the way, this is the bpgbuyan.com website, that company that was based out of Slovenia. Uh, I also found this article here, Refiner BPG to facilitate investments in precious metals through Ripple. This was back from April, 2018. Gonna read you a little bit of this just to give you guys some context. So precious metal refiner BPG Covine has partnered with the Ripple Network XRP to offer investors an alternative way to invest and trade in physical metals. The clearing system will be managed by London Precious Metal Clearing Limited by combining the efficiency of Ripple Network and digitization of physical metals. The refiner expects to provide a service that is as transparent as exchange traded assets. They go on to say, according to the Slovenian refiner, uh, the process of supplying precious metals on the Ripple blockchain is a game changer. This is able to restore several issues which may usually arise while offering physical precious metals or exchange traded assets. The company believes that Ripple implementation in metals trading uh, is just the start of the adoption of blockchain technology, which will radically transform the economy. Nowhere in here is it talking about these trust lines, which uh, I'm still kind of, I still just kind of don't understand. Basically, if you're going to use XRP, XRP is going to be needed in the market to transfer value. Supply and demand rules apply here. At least that's how I see it. Maybe I'm seeing it in a simplistic way. If anybody has any idea, please put it down in the comments. He goes on to say, you have been scammed. XRP is a gas token. XRP does not need a high value and Ripple controls 45 billion tokens. By the way, 45 billion tokens isn't that much to use as a gas pool. Ripple lends the gas to transfer the gold, takes a small fee, and the XRP is returned to the liquidity pool when the transaction is finished. The lender of last resort. So that's... Uh, how it's going to work, apparently, according to this theory here. Now, let me continue with this. So now that you are aware of secondary assets being run on the XRPL, how does this affect you? Well, employees of Ripple have already said that XRP's current business model will not be successful unless XRP carries a higher price. This is correct for Ripple's current business model of remittances and interbank transfers to be successful. XRP must carry a higher value. Again, he's saying XRP must carry a higher value for this remittance model that apparently is a huge facade. Um, however, if Ripple were planning to change its business model to being the caretaker of the XRPL to be used as a trust line issuance and transfer network, the price of XRP itself is not important. How so, you ask? Anyone can issue a trust line asset on the XRPL. This can be anything, a CBDC, a precious metal, a stock, a bond, a certificate, an IOU, a car, a house, anything. The cost to create a trust line is to lock 5 XRP no matter what XRP's current price is. 
Then he goes on, uh, gives an explanation about how you can do that. Uh, you know, if you decided to create anything you want, you just put it on the XRPL and it'll only cost you five XRP. That's basically this section here. Not going to get into it in depth. Of course, guys, I link everything in the description uh, if you still want clarity on that. But then how does Ripple benefit from this? Well, he says all the inherent transaction fees are paid as 0 0.00001 drops from XRP to keep the network going. But what if Ripple has never planned to be in the remittance industry? Again, the conspiracy continues. What if they just wanted to install their services in every bank all over the world? How would Ripple benefit if XRP has nothing to do with the value of the sub assets like XAU or XUSD? or XAPPL, like he mentions up here that I skipped over, that are issued on its network, and XRP is just burnt to make the transaction. Well, if Ripple became an exclusive custodian of the XRP network to oversee that it works correctly and scales it as adoption spreads, they would request a fee on a per transaction basis. Every government, stock company, small business, or asset holder would oversee their own trust lines, of course, and Ripple would have nothing to do with those secondary assets. Ripple supplies a gas reserve to ensure that the system keeps working and they take a small cut from each transaction to let everyone use their roads uh, and then he gives the analogy of a ripple toll booth so what does that look like well you know he gives an example down here basically suggesting that every adult in the world makes about 15 transactions per month uh, and then ripple charges the 0 0.001 cent so a tenth of a cent uh, and then we talk about 3.9 billion adults times 15 equals uh, 58.5 million dollars and that would be ripples monthly revenue so 58.5 million us gross revenue per month or 702 million us per year is gross revenue for taking a tenth of a cent cut from every transaction no matter how large or small that runs across the xrpl and we know this is cheap this fee structure uh clearly beats all the current fee structures that exist today it's very cheap but what if the world had a level playing field and he's suggesting that this is maybe what ripple means by a level playing field where everyone could participate in the global economy everyone no matter who or where they are would pay the same low fee of 0 0.001 cent to accept payments for their goods or services to issue their own trust line assets to buy and sell XRP has never needed a high value. It needed a high supply, a resource to consume with a nearly unlimited supply. By the way, I disagree with this. Uh, 100 billion XRP is actually not that much in the grand scheme of things when you're thinking about all the money, guys. So there are 195 countries in the world. Each would require 5 XRP to lock up, and then he uh, multiplies that. Gives you a number there. It would cost 975 XRP to create the trust lines required to have a CBDC for every single country on the planet uh, that are completely run off the XRPL, that is maintained by Ripple, and have completely separate inherent values from XRP and Ripple itself. So basically suggesting this is all a hoax. Gas is the only utility for XRP. To run the system, 0 0.000010 XRP per transaction across every market, every country, every product, everything. XRP doesn't need value. It just has to exist to be burnt. To keep the network running, the assets that carry value will run parallel and their value does not need to be collateralized by XRP on the trust line. Ripple and XRP will run the future economy whether you like it or not. Charging 0 0.1 per transaction to process it and burning 0 0.00001 XRP as gas to do so. This does not mean that XRP has to rise in value. Uh, it just means that, again, it is the gas, blah, blah, blah. So Ripple has been lying to you. Now, this is where I feel like he loses it because Ripple has never said anything to us uh, with regards to the XRP token that they do not want let out. Getting you to pay a premium for its worthless gas token so that you can fund their dream of becoming a toll booth located in every bank, point of sale terminal, and cell phone on the entire planet. So clearly, somebody who has concocted a theory here to get XRP investors a bit rattled. Uh, now, Mickey B. Fresh down here. This is a story, not a theory. Maybe a shallow-minded will fall for your conspiracy story, but if you understand how the tech works, it's honestly laughable, no offense. You wasted your time with this thread of researching facts, not conspiracy theories based on inaccuracies of tech. 
a uh, lot of people down here not buying it. David the Day here actually uh, comparing the precious metals, the BPG precious metals refinery logo to the bearable guy sun graphic that we saw uh, several years back. Uh, Moon Lambo here. This is made up conspiracy theory gibberish. The author must have some serious inside information. Know all this. I hope not too many people fall for this tripe. These are outrageous claims and there's no supporting evidence of any of it. Just lots of weird dot connecting. Ah, so some people, you know, taking to blocking this guy. Bull Run Wonka says, ha ha ha, classic FUD. You don't even understand how Spark works. Boo Boo down here. So all that infrastructure, MoneyGram using it, SBI, all the partners for gas. If that was the case, they would have flooded the market with the escrow and be damned with it. SPQR would never have spent so much time deep diving with it. FUD, you'll miss Spark. Jmore 7 down here, and yet, has anyone sent this to Brad Garlinghouse and Joel Katz? Oops, I did. Let's see what their response of a lifetime is. Bet the Riddler's ghost out of this one. I'm sticking with my plan. Would love to hear uh, Joel Katz specifically or Galgatron's response to this. Uh, and Brad Garlinghouse for that matter. Of course, they're going to tell us what they've been always telling us. I think uh, Joel Katz is more likely to get into the details because uh, he likes to use the technology to explain what Ripple's vision is and how XRP is going to be utilized in the system. I think that it is ultimately very laughable to think that uh, Ripple has set up this, all of these partnerships, all these rails to create cross-border transactions just to fool us and use their token as a gas token. It kind of doesn't make sense. And that is what a lot of this theory hinges on. The fact that, you know, it's all a ruse. Uh, and that Ripple saying that XRP needs to be a high price is all a ruse. Again, I doubt that. You also have uh, companies like Grayscale here, a reputable company uh, offering an XRP trust, a digital asset for global enterprise payments for investors and for advisors. Now, would they be offering this unless they thought XRP had potential to grow down the road? I don't think they would. That's my personal opinion on this. They have a reputation. I mean, this is not the only product that they offer. So they have to uphold their reputation with their clients uh, if this were the case, I just don't think they would be offering something like an XRP trust. It doesn't make sense. Also, we got to remember, guys, David Schwartz has consistently mentioned this, and I'll leave this tweet in the description for those of you guys who still haven't seen it. It's from September 2017. And remember, this is back from 2017 when uh, the volatility in the crypto market was quite high. Uh, just going to start down here. It is also important that it not be terribly expensive to hold XRP. A higher price will mean that a similarly sized sell will produce less volatility. So a higher price could mean a lower cost to hold XRP. So long as XRP's general price direction is up, the volatility can be hedged without much difficulty and uh, there have been other times where David Schwartz has said XRP needs to be at that high value and uh, in the blink of an eye essentially XRP can't rise gradually because people will FOMO into the market uh, one day it just needs to be a high price in order for Ripple to accomplish what they want to accomplish down here he says when Bitcoin sold for one dollar you couldn't really use them to buy or sell a house you can now because bigger transactions require bigger value the higher the price of XRP the larger the payments and as an example, Joel Katz mentioned uh, buying a house. If Bitcoins are worth $10,000 and the house is worth, for sake of argument, $100,000, all you would need was 10 Bitcoin to buy a house. So 10 Bitcoin, that's not a lot of Bitcoin to actually have in your wallet versus if the house was $100,000 and Bitcoin were worth $1, you would need 100,000 Bitcoin. So you'd need much more quantity of Bitcoin because the value of Bitcoin is lower. When you're expecting exponential growth, even a small increase in your starting point can pay huge dividends down the line. Let's not forget also this tweet here, guys, also from David Schwartz back in 2017. If you need a million dollars worth of XRP to make payments, the market price will be $1 million. The price of XRP doesn't affect anything. However, higher prices mean the same size payments will move the market less making them cheaper so higher is better guys you've heard it from david schwartz multiple times on twitter even at swell last year when he was talking to mr bxrp he said you know price needs to be high and it has to happen in the blink of an eye there is no other way ripple has been refining their business model they're sticking to cross-border payments uh and they said once they master cross-border payments they will branch out and move into different verticals now that's not to say that maybe this uh, has some legitimacy in the fact that we could also see 
see XRP moving precious metals across the XRPL. Of course, they do have uh, that relationship with BPG, as mentioned on their website here. Also, eMetals, the Ripple Gateway. eMetals platform is an alternative way to invest in and trade physical metals. It aims to provide the investment performance of the standard metal markets uh, with the transparency of an exchange traded security. And guys, eMetals is a Ripple partner. So it's not to say that XRP won't be used. I highly doubt though that is going to be used in this way that uh, this guy is suggesting here. There are too many holes in this theory and uh, I want you guys to weigh in. A lot of people here on Twitter uh, discussing their thoughts on this. Wise down here saying uh, this kind of falls apart once you do the math and find out XRP is extremely scarce. Not to mention the verticals such as coil which combine the scarcity that are going to drive massive demand. Uh, just for fun look at what Trustful is offering then ask well what's America's answer to that? Dave of the day says scarce 45 billion escrowed XRP is 4.5 quadrillion transactions worth of gas. Again, some may argue that uh, 100 billion XRP is not scarce. Some may argue that, you know what, maybe it isn't enough to run all the money in the world. Bull Run Wonka down here saying, if you were smart, you would realize that we will become the liquidity providers via DeFi smart contracts, utilizing the Flare Network Spark token, getting paid for oracles too. Trustless tokens will be created on the Flare Network, not IOUs, which require trust. There's a lot going on down here, guys. I want you in on the conversation. Put it down in the comments. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.